the Bucks, and we get to Giannis, and and I am going to defer to you for a moment because I, I, I once I get going, I, it's going to take a little while to stop. I think. Let me uh, let, let me establish the bridge by saying this: Giannis ain't that guy. <laughs> Uh, you take us wherever you want to take us. Dude, he's the MVP. How, how is, is he not, not that guy? That guy. I'm going to lay out. Giannis is not that guy. Go I, ahead. Look, I'm not just I'm just not reactionary like a lot of people want to be when it comes to Giannis. I know that he's got faults in his game, which is which is interesting because he's won back to back MVPs. He's been the defensive player of the year. He's got all of the accolades, and he's got the body type. He's got the explosiveness. He's got he's got everything that you would want in a big man. The problem is, and maybe we got enamored with that, all that, like the the intangibles, uh, the skills. You know, if, it, if this was football, we'd say, and he was a quarterback, we'd say, the arm talent. He can make all the throws, <laughs> right? TD. Like, he's got all of that. Like, you you, you, you want to chisel out, like, the perfect-looking ba- basketball player? It's going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. It, mm. Period. He's tall. He's strong. I'm, ta- I'm talking about physically. I'm okay, not, talking about, not, not the modern player. Okay, I'm not talking about any skills. I'm not you, throwing you. anything. I'm just I saying. Pull a guy out of the, the, the ether and just plop him down. That's what you want. The 6'11", you know, thin, thin, wiry, athletic, strong, str- like strong. Yeah, sure. Like, yep. uh, I can dribble. They do all those things. Okay. Um, and then the problem becomes, now that we look at Giannis in full, <laughs> is that he can't shoot, man. And in right. today's NBA, that's really the biggest issue with Giannis is he cannot shoot. And I'm not just talking about – like a pull-up jumper from the elbow, you know, whatever it is, 15, 14 feet, whatever that may be. Not, not even that. Mm-hmm. Like, he can't shoot free throws. No. Like, he can't do the easy things. Um, and it's what we used to get on, say, the old school big man, like Shaq, right? Yep. Shaq gets to the line, end of the game, <laughs> you got a chance to beat him because you put Shaq, Shaq on Shaq. the line, you might get one of two <laughs> or you might get zero of two. Hack him. Exactly right. And Giannis is falling into that. Yes, now, he is. with that being said, He's still the MVP, man. He's not still, not book, he's not. He can still score at okay. will. He can still be dominant in the paint as a defender, as a rim protector. He's still athletic. He's a good defender both in the <sighs> wing and in the post. So I hear what you're saying, especially because they're on a bad news. By the way, I haven't right even now. really said anything yet. I know. Well, I know, <laughs> you know where I'm I know, go. I know what you're about to say <laughs> uh-huh. because they're on a f- uh, five-game five losing, st- losing streak. And yeah. the Brooklyn Nets, who are on a five-game winning streak have now jumped them yes. uh, to second place. It is uh, There are flaws there, and that means as much as we want to believe that he's the, like the man-man, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's kind of the second fiddle dude. That's the ultimate point here. The, the Milwaukee Bucks will not win a championship hmm. if Giannis is the best player on the team. He'll make a ton of money. Uh, they'll win a lot of games, mm-hmm. although this year they're only a couple of games over 500. But isn't it hard to say him not being the best player? Don't they just need like a better or more consistent scorer? You well, know what I mean, like uh, no, like, no, like, I, I think they need, they need, a, need facil- a better facilitator. Like if they have James, if James Harden, I think they need a superstar. If, well, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I really do. Like if Middleton's James Harden, that, Middleton's good, but he's not that guy. You know he, that. Uh, but Drew he's Holiday, Drew Holiday's been hurt. And he's more their facilitator okay. in defense. He's got yeah. some defensive acumen as well. Yes, yes. But, I like Drew Howard. Drew's a good player. I'm not going to. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you know, downsize Drew Holiday. Listen, I don't want to hear. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about points per game and the gaudy <laughs> rebounding stats and the incredible PER. His two biggest weaknesses, which have proven fatal in the playoffs now multiple times, he has not gotten better at. He's not in year two. He's not Mm -hmm. in year four. He's not in year six. He's in year eight. He's kind of (laughs) what he is. Eight years already? Yeah, man. (laughs) Which on almost every level is superb, except the one level that you need to win the championship. This is not to downgrade him to Scrubville. uh, He is a star where I would kick back hardly, uh, 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 strongly, I should say, is that he's not a superstar. Hmm. Like, I don't see him in that prism. Teak. Last year, now I got to reference some numbers. I know numbers could get boring, but this is important, all right? Last year, he was about 31% from from downtown. This year, he's 28%, which Mm. is exactly his average. Eight years in, he has literally not gotten better. Same career average, you know, it's the same exact percentage in year eight. Last year, 
63.3% from the free throw line, 63.7% this year. Now, you could say, well, yeah, okay, but this is where you have to dig. He shot 52.5% from the free throw line last year in the East, Eastern Conference semis, right, against Miami. That's just gross. 20 out of 41 for the primary facilitator, the primary scorer. You know what? The year before, Eastern Conference finals against the Raptors, he shot 55% from the free throw line. Now, I understand it's a pandemic year, and I understand that the Raptors are playing better basketball, but the Raptors are still far from a championship team. They lost early in the season. They gave up a, bu- a buck 30. I loved it because it was my Knicks, but the Knicks are one of the worst offensive teams in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Look at the numbers. Great defensive team. They play hard. They can't score with frequency. They gave up a buck 30. They've lost games to the Pelicans, to Charlotte. They lost to Miami without Jimmy Butler. They just got swept by the Raptors back-to-back games. I mean, what other evidence do you need? Because I've been saying now for two years, I don't think the Bucks will win. Mm-hmm. I've been saying for two years, while still giving Giannis his props, but yeah. separating the I've been saying for years, I like Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton's not the right number two for Giannis. He's not that guy. He's a number three, Okay. What am I missing here? Why, why am I wrong? I don't think you are wrong, BT. I don't think you're missing anything. I think we've seen this. Uh, what's, because once you get to those seven-game series in the postseason, we, we, it, the, the trend is Giannis might have a day, right, a game. Yes. But eventually he gets figured out. And, you know, they were, you know, a couple of bounces away against the Raptors from, from, from moving forward. But it's still there were there were moments in that series where where Giannis was neutralized and without a second guy, uh, a good consistent dominant score, you just can't win a championship in the NBA. You just can't. And, and not only dominance, he's got to be he's got to be a dynamic score, meaning that he can do it in multiple ways. And as I was I was getting ready to say this and and, and we got derailed a little bit. But if Giannis had James Harden, like if James Harden had got traded to the to the Milwaukee Bucks as opposed to the Brooklyn Nets. Yep. I'd look at the Milwaukee Bucks and say, especially after I've seen this 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 refiguring yeah, of, this this of, iteration of the this, Nets. Of, of no, of James Harden. Yeah, oh, forget, I got you. forget the got Nets, you. but this refiguring of James Harden. Yeah. James Harden is the man. I mean, he's not an all-star starter. Uh K K D and Kyrie are. But the 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 catalyst, like the 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 the, the straw in that Brooklyn Nets, is James Harden, dude. He's leading the team uh, in assists and For rebounds sure. and and steals even. Be <laughs> at per, he's got the best per on the team. Like he is the catalyst that's making that team go right now, especially with KD and Kyrie intermittently being unavailable. Mm. James Harden's been the man. Now, if mm. he was on the Bucks, yeah. like if they had a guy like that who you know can be a facilitator, get you twelve to. 17 assists in any in any particular game but oh wait you got to go score 38 yes. uh, like James Harden had to by the, the way day to there's win. only one guy like who else does that I, you're right there's not that's my point like it, Milwaukee needs that kind of player and that's not, my premise and there's only one and as crazy as it sounds he joined a super team and with the Nets and it's why if they get better defensively because they are literally one of the worst in, in, in basketball right now I think they're 28 a little better um, last couple nights true a little better still, uh, the Lakers didn't have a AD, the Suns game, they didn't yep. give up a ton of points. Like, it's getting it's getting incrementally better for the Nets defensively. Yes, it but, is. But statistically on the season, they're yeah. in the way in the back. No, I, I'm there still. But listen, by the way, so there is only one James Harden who could drop, forget about 30, could drop 50 on you and still go out and get, you know, 16 assists, which is what he had the other night. But there are other players that would, on most nights, mm. relegate Giannis to a position that I believe he really needs to be for them to win a championship. Go get Bradley Beal. Do whatever it takes to get Zach Levine. Now, the Bulls might not trade him within the division, Yeah, uh, but this team's going to win nothing. This team's going to win nothing. It's a and sh- before you know it, Giannis is going to be 30 and eventually 31, and he's going to be disenchanted, and eventually, year by year, not detectable yet, not even close, but in two years it might be, that, that little slice of burst will slowly erode, and what he is best at, which is going by you with his speed and going over you with his hops, mm-hmm. will no longer quite be the, the uber asset that it is now. Now, he won't be nailed to the floor, but without the other aspects of his game, how – this is my problem with MVP voting. It's why LeBron should win it every year. Can somebody explain to me – and I know Shaq's an anomaly. Shaq's yeah. won the MVP. I get it. But 
How could you win the MVP two years in a row and you can't hit a free throw and you can't hit a three in the modern NBA? Because That's why I'm tired of hearing about, oh, he dropped 35 and he had 17 rebounds. Rebounds mean nothing these days. True. Nothing. But, but, but the, Assists the, mean nothing because everything's sped up. But those, Watch Giannis play. He's not there when it matters. Yeah. Money time. He doesn't make the winning play. Yeah, but those things matter to uh, the, the, the lay viewer. And, 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 and yeah, but the lay viewer is not voting for the MVP. I, I agree, but it, it feels like it is, though, because that's, that's, what, that's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, we want it. We get enamored with the statistics, and the statistics, yeah, they're great. They're fantastic. They put you in all-time, you know, uh, regions of of sport, but it, they don't win games. St- you know, stats are fantastic, but they don't win. It's it's moments that win games, and I think that's the biggest issue with Giannis is those moments. He's just come up short, and uh, mm. I don't know if there's an easy fix to it. That, there's not any. There's no. There's not. That's really the issue. BT is like, where's the fix yep. to what to what ails him? Yeah, that, that, that's an outstanding point, right? And, yeah. And go ahead. It's, it's, it, like, go. it's good to it's good to talk about it. Like, I think it's like w- people will listen to this and say, "Oh, you guys are crushing you." Oh, you know they will. Right? They'll, be, he's, they'll, they'll he's, disagree. That's he's fine. The, he's the two time MVP. That's I fine. mean, he's deep as a player. The, he's the man. We don't. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, we'll get about. roasted on social media but, for this. But, I really couldn't care less. But the problem. But the reality is, like. He needs to know these faults because he doesn't. He, he's okay with this. What's going on with the, yep. with the with the with the Milwaukee Bucks right now? He's okay with this. He signed. He he's, he he willingly determined this is where I want to stay. You're right, and it's you the know? Same, it's the same thing over and, and over that, and but... over again. Like f- three years ago or four years ago, they didn't have they didn't have nearly the team to be even competitive. No. Uh, in the Eastern Conference towards you know towards a championship, they're getting there. But that, See, I think they're going backwards. I think they're uh, regressing. Well, I mean, I think they're over, regressing. over the last th- – this year they certainly are. But over the last couple of years, collectively, they were getting towards there. I mean, they were they were close to being, you know, a finals team. And then ultimately, um, they you hit a point. Like, you hit a, you hit a ceiling where if you don't do like an like – an, um, I don't, I don't even know what the word is for it. Like a adjustments, roster not, like, enhancement, or bigger, you're talking about larger players? than that. Like a like a supernova move. Like you got to make that supernova move. Like go get James Harden or go get Bradley Beal. Or, or how these, about this? How about moves. the back to back MVP learns how to address his weakness? Yeah, but can he? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, the evidence right now, the answer is no. BT, big, he's the same exact shooter he was eight years ago. Big men literally. Always, big men always have problems. I don't know why. I mean, there's some physics to this. I'm Dirk sure. Nowitzki was money. Uh, shooting free throws. Dirk Nowitzki was money from the stripe. He was. Hakeem Olajuwon was pretty good. Ewing yeah. was pretty good. I mean, yeah. at least in the 70s, man. Yeah. Yeah, true. But you know, I, Moses was. I mean, you, you don't have to be ninety-one percent like Steph Curry, but you, you can't be fifty-five and a half percent in in seven-game series. And by the way, th- they're not just regressing this this year. Two years ago, they were in the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. Last year, they were in the Eastern Conference Quarterfinals. Now they're a couple of games over five hundred. This mm-hmm. is not just a small little sample. This is now. Two and a half years of going, in my opinion, and, and the direction is backed up by what I just said, in the wrong direction. Yeah. And I'll take it a step further. Name any superstar. Name anyone. Steph Curry, LeBron James, A.D., Doncic, Dame Lillard, Jason Tatum when he's, when he's not dealing with COVID stuff, right? I mean, Kawhi Leonard. We all know the superstars. Now think about clocks ticking, eight. Seven, six, they're trying to shake somebody. They rise up from 20. You feel good about all the – now, they might not make every shot. Harden, Kyrie, Durant, obviously. I know I'm missing some. Those guys, you sit back. If you're a fan of a, that team, you say, this, he's going to drill this shot. This is money. We're going to win the game. <laughs> when Giannis does that, you expect to lose. <laughs> you expect it to go clank. Well, it depends on how far away he is. I'm well, talking about that jump shot when you can't get to the rim, when the defense and the coaching off the timeout reacts to that yeah. and prevents you from going to the rim, yeah. which is what decent coaches kind of do. Right. And good defensive teams, which are playing in May and June, that's what they're waiting for. They got problems, the Bucks. No, of course they do. They I got problems, I don't man. think I, – I don't, the, I, the only issue I have with their problems is that they're not seeming to acknowledge them. And But the challenge to them – is they're gonna, they're gonna have to overpay for free agents, uh, or they're gonna have to overpay to get to tra- in, in trading, um, and so how do you do that? And that's it's just hard. Like there's not an easy solution. The perfect complement uh, to to Giannis is a guy like James Harden. The problem is there's not many of them. Or and, Beal, or, or Beal to or, just or widen Beal, the court. But, yeah, but I mean. 
Beal's he's thirty five a game. True, but are nothing around him. Are they going to are they going to trade him? I I, mean, I, I, I I that I can't answer. It's hard. I, I don't know the answer to that because he's, he's he's you know saying I want to stay I want to stay in Washington. He doesn't want to bounce. He, he loves it there, he and does. you got to respect that too. I, but I respect it, and yeah. in, in in the face of whatever their season's going to turn out to be, you're going to push out your superstar who doesn't even want to leave? The answer is no. So I would if I get a good package because i got to rebuild. i got to worry about winning. But I, yeah. I know that that sounds callous, and the, not everybody would agree with that, that take. But the Wizards – excuse me, Tiki. The, the Wizards are miles from winning. No doubt. Winning, no winning doubt. big. No doubt. And by the time they're there, Bradley Beal's going to be in his early 30s, and if you don't trade him now or next year – you're going to lose that window of really getting a ton back for him. Anyway, I mean, the, your point is, is valid. It's not going to be easy, but time's ticking. It's ticking on every superstar, which is why James Harden said, get me out of Houston. Mm-hmm. I got to give myself a chance to win. Giannis had the same opportunity. He elected to stay. We respect that. Yep. But now he's faced with this conundrum, and it's not changing anytime soon. That's right. You know? Uh, what is changing is the way we need to perceive these nets. Uh, we know that they can drop a buck thirty on you with their eyes shut, playing a little defense. Now I know no AD last night, but no Kevin Durant either. So in terms of the you know the the upper structure of the NBA, are the Nets truly, truly, truly the team to beat? Are they the best team in the NBA? All right, Teak. Uh, are we sure the Nets are absolutely the best team in the NBA right now? Are we sure about this? <laughs> I, I don't know if they are the best team because the Jazz are pretty dang good themselves. Nine straight wins for the Jazz. But the Brooklyn Nets, BT, they, they're playing ridiculously well, even when their superstars are, are unavailable. And obviously KD's out for a couple of weeks here with the hamstring. He did have the COVID um, contact tracing issue that we mm-hmm. talked about a couple weeks ago. but When he got yo-yoed yeah, in, out, in, out, yeah, exactly. yeah, out, in, out. Yeah, somebody you rode with and yada, yada, yada. Um, but even despite that, they've been playing good basketball really ever since James Harden came. They've been playing great offensive basketball, the number one scoring team in the NBA, and I think they have the number one uh, net rating as well in the NBA um, for, for offensive. And it's because of this catalyst in James Harden. And I got to give him so much credit. Because, you are a Harden guy. You well, love James I mean, Harden. I've always loved, you love him. I've always loved like, – like, he has a plan. Like, there's a philosophy to what he does. Now, part of this is Mike D'Antoni, obviously, when he was in Houston. It was like, look, we know what your greatest skill is. You know, yo-yoing people, step back three pointers, and getting to the rim and getting fouls. Like it used to be annoying when I didn't like him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And he'd go through the lane, he'd stick his hands out. It's like foul me. You know, try to get this ball. It's right here. Take it, take it. All right, I'm gonna move. You're gonna foul me. I'm gonna go to the hole and 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 and, and score. And then I'm gonna you know uh, uh, get the free throw as well. And so I've always appreciated his game because he's he's he has a plan. Mm-hmm. And now that I watch him in this new role. Because it's not emphasizing him as the scorer. Like James Harden is not going to lead the league in scoring this year. No, but James Harden maybe never again in his career. I I don't if disagree you, if you with think that. Think about BT. it. I do not disagree with that right? because if this does, I mean, however long this this run works with this this big three, say it's two years or three years, he's going to go someplace else. And he's in because at that age he's going to be like 33 ish, thirty three, thirty two, whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah. he's going to be like he's going to have to be in this role that he's in now, right? And so I think. He's mastering it. Like think that that's my biggest takeaway from the Nets. Yes, I know they have the big three, and I know Joe Harris is great uh, as an accent piece there. And then when he has to be the second fiddle, he's actually great at that as well. They didn't miss. And, he missed one shot, left one three last that's night. That's right, as we saw over the last couple of games. Like I get all of that. Yeah. But the biggest thing for me is is James Harden has evolved into this complete player i mean he's got he's averaging a steal and a half a game or mm-hmm. he's actually playing defense not like elite defense he's not a lot no no no, at all. no no but I mean, passing lanes etc all of that stuff yeah he's doing really well and it's surprising i think to me and i think to a lot of people as well he's the catalyst for why this nets team has won th- uh, five games in a row and are sitting second in the east right now and le- he is that's undeniable but let's also give kyrie irving some credit here because no if kyrie if Coach Kyrie didn't determine that they were going to switch up the roles here in practice about a week or so ago, uh-huh. maybe the transition's not as seamless. And the other aspect, and we know that he's out. We just talked about him briefly. Uh, but Kevin Durant is – is he's not exactly like LeBron as a player, obviously. No. But he's very much the same mold in terms of being an incredibly easy superstar, all-timer yeah. to play with. Yeah, that's like, right. Like his adaptability, Kevin Durant's, is is incredibly understated 
And I think, uh, you know, you could talk about the fall away, the handle, the length. I mean, all the things that, that, that he does, um, the, the incredible range. But the adaptability is, is an important piece of, of Kevin Durant's puzzle. And you throw it all together, you've got a team that is incredibly dangerous. And right now there's no team I'd rather watch in the NBA than the Brooklyn Nets. Agree. They're entertaining. And, no doubt. And they're good. My only reservation, though. My, now, again, let's, let's keep in mind. Yeah. There was no Anthony Davis last night. That's a grab. Yeah, we're not making a big deal about this. No, this not about the win, just in totality. Yeah. And the Nets don't have a lot of interior resistance. I mean, outside of Jordan, you know, they, when uh, when Allen got chipped out in the deal, you, you lose that two-headed monster. So yep. even though AD plays outside, AD would have would have gotten gotten loose inside too. My only concern, right? If I if I had to be that guy that that tapped the brakes a bit, Steve Nash. Hmm. And and I'm not saying that he's incompetent by any stretch. And what do you, what are you worried about? Right I now? need to see the first point of adversity. I don't mean now. They're going to blow teams out if they're healthy. Mm-hmm. When you get and even the first round, they'll smoke whomever they play. I think right now they'd actually play the Knicks in round one. Whomever they play, they're going to destroy them. But when you get to that point, whether you're down two games to one or down three games to two or down one game to zero. There's going to be a point where coaching matters. It might mm-hmm. not matter in the middle of February. I grant you that against most teams. Not not that much. They can kind of autopilot this thing and, and drop a buck 20 and just wax people. I don't know if they've got the coaching yeah. that is required to win a championship. And, and, and the unfortunate thing is the only way to know to like grow in that role yeah. is to be in that role. For right? sure. You're not, there's no class you're going to take. Yeah, you're going to get some help from – Mike D'Antoni, who has uh, obviously been in the postseason a lot as his assistant, the offensive assistant. Even Jock Vaughn has some some sway there, but uh, because of those couple of years that he was on the uh, uh, on that Nets bench when yep. he was you know helping them when they didn't have a ton of talent. So there's experience there, but it's still ultimately on on Nash. Um, I actually have given him a little bit more credit, and I think he he might learn as the season goes on, because he, think about it. He's learning now yep. how to deal with, first of all, three studs. Like one of the big things that we talk and we crush Brad Stevens about um, up in Boston is that, man, you, you're such a great teacher. You can't handle the superstar, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I, I think Steve Nash is doing a good job of handling the superstars on his squad. The X's and O's side, that's what we need to see once he gets into a fight uh, in a seven-game series once they get into the postseason. Yes. But, again, he's got help. I, I have faith that he'll be able to do it. One, because he was in that situation himself a few times. It's talking about Steve as a player. Yep, as a oh, player. Oh, the aptitude and the acumen is undeniably there. The but only does that immediately transfer? Well, I well, well, don't here's, think it does, well, but we'll see. Here's, here's why I, it might not. The game was so different when he was doing it versus yeah. what it is now. So, and the players were different, too. Very different. I hear you. So... I mean, the Nets are, some nights they're a three-man show, some nights they're a two-man show, some nights they're a one-man show, but the Nets are a show. There's no dispute in that. Yep. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.